Hello and welcome to this 20th video in this series on programming in C. There's been a little bit of a break because I had to visit England for a couple of weeks and in the next couple of weeks I'm going to be visiting Germany so there's going to be another break after this one probably but then everything should return to normal and videos will be flying onto YouTube. Right, in this video we're going to sort of complete the first few videos we've done on beginning or look taking a first look at functions and I just wanted to provide maybe a slightly more practical example or at least an example that justifies using a function because the functions that we've built in the last three videos really didn't actually need to be there they were for the they were there for the sake of being there to show how functions work so I've created a little program here which you can see on the left hand side it might be worth now just pausing the video just to write down the start of this main function here and then I'll scroll down to the rest. But essentially what it does, it starts main as usual. Everything in this program is completely familiar and has been covered in previous videos. But we're basically asking for input from the user whilst the first character of the user's input is not a big capital Q. The console prints enter a direction north, south, east or west, NSEW, gets the input. Then we have a switch statement asking what is the input? Is it north, south, east or west or is it Q? And if it's not either of these, printing unknown command to the screen as default. And then when the while loop is exited, printing that the program has ended and returning zero. And here at the top at the start of main we decided something called position we've defined sorry something called position index and set it to zero so if we imagine with a real long stretch of the imagination that this is say a game and position index is the position on a board let's say of a player or on a map or something like that each time the user enters a direction we want this position index to change the way to do it would be like this so we could say that if they say north, position index is increased by 1. And then we print to the screen, player moved direction. And we'll print the character that was entered, new position. And we'll make a D and a new line character there. And then we'll print our character. and we'll print the new position index value for the player. Now we want to copy and paste that to each of the south, east and west. We'll say that west is minus 8, east is plus 8 and south is minus 1. Now if I say all this, save this sorry, and go and compile and then run this program you can say it's asking for a direction. If I press north, the new position is now 1. East, the position is now line. West, it's back to 1. South, and it's back to 0. So everything's working in a big queue, and the program has ended. Very good. There's actually a problem with this. It works completely as intended, but the problem is, let's say that we realise that there's, say, a grammar error here, and it should actually be player moved in direction. So we need to change this line here. The problem is we don't only need to change it on this line here for north, we need to change it again for south, again for east and again for west. Because this line here, well these two lines in this case, are repeated in each of these case statements here. So we've got four repetitions and when you've got a really big program, say with maybe 20 or 30 or even 100 repetitions, you can see where you quickly start to get problems when you're fixing bugs and needing to make small changes to the program. It's very easy to miss off a change and also a bit of a pain in the neck to have to change the same thing multiple times. And whenever you see in your programs when you're writing that you're starting to repeat what you're writing, then an alarm should go off and you really should be looking at creating a function to do this work for you. So let's think here about what we actually need from this program. Or from, sorry, from a function. We need to be able to change the value of position index and up until now we've not covered changing, sending a value into a, fun a function to change it. We've dealt with scope in a previous video which has showed if we send this position index in as an argument into a function, a copy of that is actually made 
and the function inside its own scope works with that, but this value won't actually be changed. So we need a function that returns the new value of this index. We need a function that returns an integer. And inside that function, as well as returning the new value for this, we want to print, be able to print the character the user entered. So we want to be able to send this first character of the input array as an argument. And obviously, because we're changing this value, we need to send the current value, so the integer of the current position, into the function. And we'll also need to send into the function the increment or the direction that we're actually moving. That might sound a little bit complicated, but underneath here, just to make things a bit faster, I've defined one already. And let's just simply take for now the function definition. I'll go through it at the top here. So what we've got here is a definition of a function that returns an integer. I've called it move player. As I said, it takes in the character, the direction. So if it was north, it would be a capital N. It takes in the increment, which in the case of north would be a 1. And it takes in the current position of the player, so the position index. So that should be fairly self-explanatory. And now I'm going to take the code that I've got inside here belonging to the code block for this move player function and paste it in here and have a look at what we've got. So the first thing I do is inside the scope of this move player function is declare a new integer called new position. A new position will be the current position that was sent as an argument plus the increment. That's fairly self-explanatory. And now this line here that we're repeating four times, player moved, direction, etc., is now here, copied pasted in, taking the direction character and printing the new position. And then we return this new position so that inside the main function we can set position index to this value. So all we need to do is use this function. So we simply have to say position index is equal to move player. The first argument is the direction character. The second argument is the increment, which in the case of north is 1. And the third argument is the position index. And that's all there is to it. And now we need to do is use exactly the same line for each of the directions here, simply changing the increment value. So this program now does exactly the same as the previous program, but you can see the benefit hopefully already. The program itself has become a lot smaller and more readable inside the switch statement. If we ever need to add anything to moving the player, so we want to print another line or we want to change something that's done in here, we now only need to do it once in this section here rather than repeating everything four times inside here. So I've saved that. So I'm just going to compile the program and run. And you can see everything is working as expected. Good. That's the end of these videos, well, these first tutorial videos on functions. The next video will start looking at pointers, which will open a huge amount of functionality in C and allow us to do a lot more. At the same time, I'm going to start a separate series on developing a chess engine in C. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.